Let's be real. Everyone wants to change something about their life. But the reality is when you wake up each morning, whether it's 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. or 10 a.m., you get out of bed and chances are you don't want to do anything different than you were doing yesterday. But you know that if you do nothing different, nothing's going to change. So what do you do if you are in this stalemate where you know things have to change, but you just don't feel like it? That's what I want to talk about in today's video. What's up, you guys? Alex Hine. Now, before we jump in, there's a link right below this video for a free goal setting worksheet to help you plan out how to have the best year ever of your life. All right. Check it out right down there below. Giving up on your goals and your dreams is pretty easy. I know that for me, when I first started getting really into holistic self growth and not just career growth, but there were all these other things I wanted to work on. You know, I wanted to be fitter. I wanted to get into my first long-term relationship. I wanted to be a happier person. I wanted to be more disciplined. And yes, definitely, I wanted career growth. But honestly, I learned pretty early on that giving up is easy. And that's why most people give up. Because continuing to fight day after day or year after year is really not so easy. And it's in those times, though, that you have to come up with strategies that really work. You know, and for me, I was working a full-time job, 40 hours a week, and then any time I could dedicate to my self-growth or to starting a business or improving my career only happened after that time. For three years, I only saw my girlfriend on the weekend, never during the week. For three years, every day I came home after already working a full workday to go to the gym and put in a couple hours into my business. So that was not easy for me. I am not just Superman and I could come home and grind all that work out. That was actually really difficult for me to do. And it was around that time that I found this story from the creator of the Dilbert comic. And this is how the story went because I found it very, very helpful. Now, in the Dilbert creator, in one of his books, he shares this idea called the energy metric. And he said that his primary goal was really to be rich and famous. Straight up, unabashed, unashamed. That was his goal. And he said that the problem that he realized was that there was no amount of hard work that guaranteed a business would succeed. And there was no amount of hard work that guaranteed something would work out. So what do you do? You basically keep trying entrepreneurial projects until one of them pops or one of them takes off. But the problem, like I found was the problem. Number one, when you are not that motivated, you're tired, or you're already working full time, which most of us will have to be. How do you actually continue to show up daily and work on those projects themselves if you're tired? And he said the energy metric was the solution for him. And all that this meant was that the projects he chose to work on were not the ones that logically seemed the best or logically seemed like they were going to make him a billionaire, but instead they were the projects he found himself most intrinsically energized by doing. So again, in his free time, which for him was the hours in the morning before his job, the projects he got himself to do were the ones, even though he wanted to be rich, they were not the projects he thought would make him rich. They were the projects that he could actually get himself to do. So he was following what energized him. And I, I think this is super, super important. And I've heard this echo from Richard Branson, from Susie Batiz, the founder of Poopery, and many, many other really successful people. So here are three questions you can really use to figure out if you are on track for harnessing your energy metric. If there is something you want to do, whether it is fitness, dating, building a business, getting a new job, these three questions can help you understand if you are actually utilizing this energy metric to your advantage. The first one is really, what is the most fun path to this goal? So if you're trying to start a business for the first time or you're looking to apply to new jobs, forget the career potential, forget the commute just for a second, which one of those is the most fun to do, right? It's going to take a lot less effort, less discipline, and it's going to be easier to do when you're really, really tired. Which path to this goal is the most fun to do. Question number two is what thing are you most excited to do each day towards this goal? So again, let's say your goal is to write a book or to get fit, right? If your goal is to get fit and you're unmotivated to go work out or exercise, how do you get fit? Well, maybe you have a couple of options. Going to the gym, going to a yoga class, doing a home workout, going and doing a workout in the park with a friend, any other myriad number of options. Well, which one of those are you most excited to do today, right now? If your goal is to get fit, do you feel like going to the gym? If that's something you like, then do it. Do you need the accountability of going to a yoga class or hiring a trainer or working out with a friend? Then do that. Whichever one of those, ironically, you end up doing is the one 
that is the path of least resistance. And the final question is, what is the easiest thing you could do every day versus what is the biggest, most effective thing that you keep procrastinating on? You know, for me now having written multiple books, this really helped me because in my head, I was like, let me write uh, five pages a day until the book is done. But some days the pages flow and some days nothing flows. So I found that rather than having a fixed goal per day, every day, my number one goal was I'm just going to write for an hour. Whatever I get done is good enough. So, so many people, you see this in the gym where at the beginning, people are jumping in for two hours a day and they inevitably are burnt out because they're sore as hell. They don't want to do it. It's very time consuming. And not many people who are even trained for a long time in a sport or in the gym spend that much time in the gym. And I think what often happens is we procrastinate because it looks like this mountain each day. But if you reduce it to what is the small thing I can guarantee do every day? The 10 minute walk after work, whatever it is, changing just your breakfast, that tends to work out a lot more often. So the third question for operating in this uh, energy metric is really what is the smallest thing you actually find yourself doing every day versus the big thing that you really keep procrastinating on? All right, you guys, I hope that energy metric can help you. It is something that has helped me a lot, especially in the years of my life where I'm very tired and unmotivated and don't feel that well. It helps you get through those times. Now, before you go, check out that link below. It's for a free goal setting worksheet to have the best year ever of your life. And I have two related videos for you right here. 